When graphing polynomial functions, there are some key components that you want to get prior to drawing your graph. Get some ordered pairs that meet the requirement of the function, and then go ahead and sketch the curve. Now this example that I'm going to do in this segment is f of x equals x to the third minus x squared minus 6x. It's a polynomial equation because it has whole number exponents on its variables, and I don't have any fraction bars with letters in the denominator of the fraction or anything like that. So remember a polynomial is an algebraic expression in which all of the exponents on the variables are whole numbers, and when we have that in a function, we have a polynomial function. Now the thing that makes these really nice to graph is that once we find the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and some end behavior, and just a few more um, ordered pairs that make the function true, then we can go ahead and draw our curve in a nice, smooth, and making transitions very nice without um, making sharp corners because that's the way that a polynomial works. So first of all, let's look at end behavior. When I look at the polynomial function, the highest degree on my exponents on my letters is a power of 3. When your highest degree is odd, the end behavior either looks like this or like this. And 3 is an odd number, so I know I have either of those two cases for my end behavior. Now to tell which of these cases I have, I look at the coefficient in front of the highest degree term. If my coefficient is positive, like in our situation here, the end behavior is this case. If the coefficient of a polynomial function that has a highest degree term that's an odd power, if that coefficient is negative, it would be that case. So we have this for ours because our highest degree is odd and our lead coefficient is positive. Okay, so next let's look at finding our y-intercept and then our x-intercepts. To find our y-intercept, we want to set x equal to 0. So we have our y, or our function value when x is 0, is 0 to the third minus 0 squared minus 6 times 0. So here, 0 to the third is 0, 0 squared is 0, then 6 times 0 is 0, so 0 minus 0 minus 0 is 0. So I have a y-intercept of 0 went in for x, and we got a 0 out for our y. Next, let's find our x-intercepts. So if I look at then setting y equal to 0 to find our x-intercepts, well here that's putting 0 on the left-hand side, and then our polynomial x to the third minus x squared minus 6x. Now if I can solve this by factoring, I want to go ahead and try to do that. Notice we have a common factor of x all the way through, so we'll factor out our common factor of x. And then inside the parentheses we have a quadratic where my factors of negative 6 that add to get negative 1 are negative 3 and 2, so it does factor. If not, I could have used the quadratic formula on that part to find the values of x that make this equation true. And so I have a factor of x, so x equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. Solving each of these, if y is 0, x comes out to be 0, so an x is 0, comma, y of 0. When x is 3, just add 3 to both sides, when x is 3, I have a y value of 0, and subtract 2 from both sides here. When x is negative 2, I have a y value of 0. So I have my three x-intercepts here. I did get three of them for this particular problem. And each of those only occur one time. So I know it's actually going to go, the graph is going to go through those dots. Now let's place these on our graph to start with. I have a y-intercept of 0, 0. I have x-intercepts of 0, 0, 3, 0, 
and negative 2, 0. And so I want to make a table of values where I can get some y coordinates out to see what's going on the graph. I know it has this shape, so I know it comes from below, goes through that dot, that dot, that dot, and up. I know because it's a polynomial, it's going to take smooth transitions. It's not going to go straight across or make sharp turns. And just to get some idea of the values that we're looking for, we're going to make a table. So let's look at just making an xy chart where we plug in an x that's left of our smallest x-intercept. So let's plug in negative 3. We know when x is negative 2, we'll get 0 out for y, but you could always check that. We're going to plug in negative 1 between that pair of x-intercepts. We're going to plug in 1 and 2, and then also plug in 4. And again, you can put your x-intercept x values there just to verify that you get those values. Now, if we go ahead and plug those through our equation, let's start with our negative 3. Well, when I plug negative 3 in for the x's, I will have f of negative 3 is negative 3 to the third minus a negative 3 squared and then minus 6 times negative 3. So that gives us, well, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. The negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, so then I have minus 9, and then negative 6 times negative 3 is plus 18. So when I take 27, sub, negative 27 subtract 9, I'm at negative 36, and negative 36 plus 18 is going to give me a negative 18. So when x is negative 3, my y is negative 18, so it verifies that I'm coming from below towards that dot. When x is negative 1, our f of negative 1 is negative 1 to the third minus a negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1. So that's negative 1 and then minus a 1 and then plus 6. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, plus 6 is 4. Then when x is positive 1, we have f of 1, which is 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 6 times 1. Well, that gives me 1 minus 1 and then minus 6, so I get a negative 6 out when x is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and then minus 6 gives me negative 6. When x is 2, we have 2 to the third is 8, minus 2 squared is 4, and then negative 6 times 2 is minus 12. So 8 minus 4 is 4, and 4 subtract 12 gives me negative 8. And then lastly, when x is 4, we have f of 4 is 4 cubed minus 4 squared minus 6 times 4. So I have 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, minus 4 squared is 16, minus 6 times 4 is minus 24. So when I have 64 minus 16 minus 24, that gives me 24. So as I graph these, I have negative 3 comma negative 18, so it comes from down here, goes to that dot, negative 1, 4, I'm going to come through this dot 
up to that one and turn around and come down to this dot at our y-intercept of 0, 0, and that was also one of our x-intercepts. At 1, we have negative 6. 2, we have negative 8. So I'm going to come down through these ordered pair graphs of those dots, up back through 3, 0, and then up towards 4, 24. So there is the graph of our polynomial function f of x equals x to the third minus x squared minus 6x. And we'll see, you see that we have our n behavior the way we are and each of our x-intercepts and our y-intercept all verified by what we also got out from our x-coordinates in our table.